So, hi everyone, welcome to today's webinar hosted by the IEEE Geoscience Rem and Remote Sensing Society. Thank you for taking time and joining us today. I'm very glad to welcome Dr. Shaili Gandhi, our speaker today, who will give us an overview of research opportunities for young professionals in India, of course, in the geospatial field. Dr. Shaili is an expert in geoinformation systems with more than 10 years of expertise. She holds a PhD from SEPT University in geospatial technology and has expertise in bridging the gap between GIS and governance. She's now the deputy center head of the Center for Applied Geomatics in SEPT Research and Development Foundation, bringing expertise and extensive experience to bear on GIS and data science. She's an executive member for the Committee on Data of the International Science Council and joint secretary of the Indian Society of Remote Sensing, Ahmedabad chapter. She's also very active with IEEE and ISG, and her accomplishments and outstanding career are surely a motivation for all young professionals seeking to specialize in the field of geoscience and remote sensing. So we will have a Q&A session after Dr. Chile's presentation. So please write your questions in the chat box or unmute yourself di directly later and ask after the presentation. So without further ado, the floor is yours, Dr. Shaili. Thank you so much, uh, Feroz. And um, good evening, everyone. I would thank you all for taking out time to discuss this very important topic and uh, look at the future prospects in India. Um, okay, so uh, this is the most in, uh, basic slide talking about what is GIS. And as we all know that your info, geographic information system is a framework to collect, organize, analyze, and communicate it, the science of the real world. Nowadays, this definition has also gone a little beyond talking about data analytics and looking at the patterns from the massive data which is being collected. Uh, I will very quickly talk about the GIS applications and the areas in which GIS is being used. Um, as we know that GIS touches our lives in each and every aspect, and geospatial technology has a lot of potential in terms of watershed analysis, resource inventories, land management, network analysis, incident mapping, special measurements, corridor selections, logistics facility management, looking at demographic analysis, picking up the engineering designs and site suitabilities. So uh, let's look at the important sectors which are using geomatics. And some of them have recently evolved um, in past five years. So engineering is again a domain where GIS is being extensively used in various aspects. Then we have construction, uh, where geospatial technology and satellite uh, data sets are being used to identify the construction sites, take uh, decisions based on the intelligence provided by the geospatial data. Sustainable development goals have been extensively using location-based intelligence to see how they can enhance and improve the quality of life in cities. Utility mapping is again a very interesting topic where GIS plays a vital role in mapping the utility networks and helping them reduce the cost while managing them. Planning uh, smart cities is again an entire domain which heavily relies on geospatial technology. In India, most of the cities have shifted towards building their entire master plans using geospatial technology. And again, this push has come from the government itself. Uh, management also uses a lot of geoanalytics in terms of identifying where the core business is, where the business expansion opportunities lie in. Climate change is one of the most alarming uh, topics nowadays. And in this, we have seen that various satellite images can actually feed in a lot of information related to the past and the present climatic conditions. 
smart governance is using geospatial technology uh, combined with IoT and various other sensors which are being installed on ground level. Infrastructure is a sector where Indian government has launched the Gati Shakti uh, program, which is looking into the entire infrastructure planning using geospatial platform. Oil and gas is again a sector where a lot of geospatial data sets can provide intelligent inputs and reduce the cost of you know, um, management as well as maintenance. Uh, BIM is again a very new uh, sector where GeoBIM is being used. There are a handful of professionals in India who know this technology and who are working on it. This is again a very big sector where civil engineers and engineers from various domains can come and build their career opportunities in building information uh, systems. Power supply is again a very interesting sector where few of the companies in India who are using geospatial technology to analyze how the power distribution is happening, what is the demand, how do they cater this demand using um, good decisions taken by the historical and the special data sets which have been generated. Water distribution mining are again areas where uh, GIS is used to see the route optimization and look at <clears throat> what is the supply and what is the demand like, how to minimize the gap between both. Uh, mining in mining sector also geospatial data sets provide inputs on where these uh, sites could actually flourish more which are the locations which have more minerals. And it also helps uh, in identifying the area of the mining um, fields. In logistics, we have been using GIS uh, for tracking our couriers, parcels. Even nowadays, we use this service to track our food delivery. And it also has become an integral part of our like, like uh, looking at Ola Uber services, tracking them. <laughs> Sorry. And then uh, from environmental perspective, GIS gives us a lot of insights. Uh, many of the cities also have sensors installed and it helps a person know which are the areas which have uh, good air quality, which are the areas which have low air quality. So this is like a progress what the Indian uh, scenario has made. Information technology plays a very major role when we talk about um, the expansion of geomatics and its industries. You know, when we are looking at the information technology domain, it also talks about integration of IoT, big data analytics, along with geospatial technology. And lastly, uh, I'll say oats and marines are. Uh, industry or a sector which has a great potential of use of geospatial technology. Uh, till now, I was just talking about the applications which are more on land, but then ports also have a major uh, application looking at the bathymetry of the sea, uh, planning the routes, looking whether, uh, identifying the locations where the ports can be established, how can we take advantage of the water, and establish offshore windmills or you know offshore ports. So again, um, geospatial technology is not restricted to land, but it also has a lot of applications in oceans and water bodies. So looking at the scopes and opportunities, um, talking about the programs like smart cities, smart government, open government, e-government which have come up in the past few years and which talk a lot about how this technology can be leveraged to get better and uh, smart decisions. It also, um, government has also realized that geospatial technology not only gives you accurate results, but it also reduces the efforts which has to be uh, 
put in to take effective decisions. Again, the decisions taken on the basis of geospatial data sets have some evidence in place. Talking about the data, we are still not there, but uh, there's a lot of talk going up around open data, open source tools to be incorporated, open source softwares to be developed to cater major uh, problems in the real life. Various tools and techniques used are uh, basic is your spatial analytics and visualization. Um, image processing also gives you a lot of insights and as we know that there has been a great progress from optical data sets to microwave then SAR data sets and now we have reached to a level where we have hyperspectral data sets and we've also seen how the Indian satellites are performing and they are, we are able to procure these data sets um, at a very economical rate um, technology wise we've got internet of things stream processing of live data sets using the cameras which are installed on the junctions and even com uh, complex event processing can be done using the current technology when we talk about the developments or end user products uh, majorly if you look at the outputs which are sent out to citizens or someone who is not very well versed with geospatial technology, we try to convert the outputs in the form of dashboards or data visualization websites so that it makes the entire understanding for a layman very easy and in a very simple way. And looking at the applications, uh, location-based applications, infrastructure, and natural resource applications are a few of them which have gained a lot of popularity in the past few years. Now, let's quickly look at the global uh, geospatial market size. As we've known and understood that GIS has been ever-evolving field and it has actually gained its, um, I would say, recognition in the past five years, the growth has been really good. So if you look at uh, the entire growth and the prediction, what has been made, uh, it looks, it says that in um, 2022, expected CAGR uh, of the geospatial industry would be 67.4 billion USDs whereas it is expected to reach 119.9 billion USDs by 2027. There have been many reports which talk about different growth patterns of the industry, but uh, nevertheless, we can always, you know, uh, count upon the use of GIS, Earth observation, 3D scanning, satellite images, mapping, and all the other geospatial technology geospatial analytics and other integrated applications of GIS, which have been used massively and which has also got its recognition in the near past. Now governments and corporate organizations can use the geospatial data as a crucial information source to make decisions about risk management and mitigation, disaster management, as well as urban has seen a lot of potential in using the entire technology because it gives a lot of power to the planners on how they want the city to grow. Now coming down to the Indian geospatial market size, it's been predicted that the Indian geospatial market is almost like on a verge of significant transformation. There has been a lot of progress and push from the government side to enhance the entire industry. Now, at present, um, we've seen that market is estimated to grow at a significantly moderate rate of 13.39% of compound annual growth rate, uh, which could be growing from 14,050 uh, crore 
in 2021 to 23,200 crore in 2025. So looking at this graph rate, it really is... Uh, very encouraging and looking at the positive sentiments which have been seen in the market we've also seen that um, the Indian economy has recovered 90% and the entire transformation in the geospatial sector has seen a lot of changes which have happened a um, lot of government policies have come in like the national geospatial policy um, the drone policy which talks about uh, allowing Indian drones to be flown over various regions for data collection, restriction on data creation and collection for your special industry has also been leveraged. Now, uh, the growth of the Indian market is also attributed to various other factors like increasing interest of leading to special industry players. At this point, we have four or five key players in the Indian industry, and majorly the push is coming from the government. Uh, the top three sectors in which the geospatial industry really ventures in is defense, urban development, and utilities. So a strategic push by the government of India to adopt latest geospatial technology is not only by bringing in policies, but it is also done using various initiatives at university levels. e Yantra is one of its examples where they teach uh, how to integrate the IoT, GIS technology together, robotics and machine learning. So like this, there are many other short courses which have been rolled out by the government to enhance the skill sets of students as well as you know early career researchers and uh, then data generated from geospatial technology can be applied to various sectors uh, and we've discussed these sectors just before a while so looking at the overall forecast how the market is going to be so currently we see that the major uh, coverage of the sector is water resource and irrigation where GIS is being used. And then the second highest expenditure is being done in building and campuses using um, geospatial technology. We've also seen a lot of growth in terms of urban development where GIS is being used to create all the data layers and decisions are taken using geospatial analytical tools. So um, looking at the Indian economy and what the market size could be, at this point, mm -hmm. we have a domestic market, which is 14, uh, not 50 crores, and export market is 11,122 crores. So the government expenditure on the geospatial agencies is 13,800 uh, crores. And then if you look at the employment side, we have uh, almost like 4,70,000 employees employed under the geospatial industry. We do not have that many skilled um, students passing out every year from all the eminent organizations within India. So there is definitely a gap in this. And now the employees distribution is like the export services are 18.10%. Domestic market is large, that is 69.50%. And then government services has a contribution of 12.40%. Now looking at what are the government's plan for utilization of the geospatial data set. We have the Amrut program under which all the major cities got uh, their master plans converted into geospatial platform. Then we had uh, we have recently got Amrut uh, 2.0 released where they are talking about 5,000 plus villages and their data sets to be converted into geospatial platform. We have over 6 lakh villages in India to be surveyed using drone 
under the Samitva scheme and the government also plans to produce 3D maps of 100 Indian cities. So this has been said by Jitendra Singh, our Union Minister for Science and Technology. And this also shows a lot of potential because if we are planning to move ahead and create such huge data sets for the urban sector as well as village level maps, it would then lead to the second stage where we'll talk about using this data and analyzing it for better governance. Then Government of India will also announce formal geospatial policy. So recent liberalization of geospatial data and services in the country have prompted good practices from private players. Government has also removed prerequisites such as getting licenses or prior approvals as a part of liberalization of geospatial data to promote Make in India solutions. Now here, the best part is that a lot of applications would be innovative and encouraged as we are moving towards, uh, you know, Make in India where we are not only talking about just analyzing the results, but we also talk about having our own satellites, own data sets, and then working on our own solutions. So, um, the entire geospatial system drone policy and unlocks space sector will be a hallmark for India's future economic progress. This is in line with the strategic push by the government of India for adopting emerging technologies across nation, national mission mode projects to achieve the vision of USD 5 trillion economy. Now, till now, I was just talking about what the government is doing and why do we really see a very bright future of this field in Indian context. So when you look at the sectorial use of geospatial information, it has almost touched each and every possible uh, sectors in India, starting from transportation and mobility, climate change, banking and retail, agriculture, real estate, insurance, mining, urban development, government, and then, of course, land management and transport infrastructure also uses a lot of GIS. Now, what are the three major stakeholders? Over here, policy priorities and facilities is one. Second is your academia, where your research scholars and projects take place. Third is the development, innovation, and business intelligence, where the private sector comes into the picture. So looking, taking a deep dive into how this entire industry is going to revolve around, uh, we start with the policymakers who come up with the ideas and liberalize the policy or implement various policies and programs where the use of geospatial technology is encouraged and uh, leveraged. Uh, these opportunities are taken by business enterprises and they envisage how this technology can be used for the betterment of um, the society. Again, this industry uh, begins and I would say none of us should really shy away saying that we would not work on data collection because geospatial data providers and creators is a huge market. And if we do not have skilled data creators or data digitizers in the market, it's just going to merely mean that we have wrong data and we are producing wrong outputs. So creating correct and accurate data is a huge market. Then providing solutions and services is again the second part where we look at the applications where this data sets can really work well. Multilateral agencies come together and work on projects which have multiple domain expertise required. And then, of course, research and academia is there to work on a lot of research problem statements and see what works and what does not work for a particular sector. Government user agencies also look into the geospatial technology from application point of view, as uh, we've seen that the urban authorities or the police departments are using a lot of geospatial data sets and working on how this data can really help in 
better governance or better management of their particular um, department. And lastly, all these solutions should benefit the citizens. So if I say that if you want to, you know, look at the complete life cycle of geospatial stakeholders, they start from the government and they end at the citizens. Now let's look at some of the major projects which are happening in India and how do we really look at the number of openings which would come up in each one of them. So um, as we know, geospatial technology is an ever-evolving field. Back then it was like handmade maps which turned into AutoCAD maps and then they were converted into a location-based geospatial map. As we move forward, these maps are going to make more sense. Looking at the amount of big data being collected by various satellite images and the data sets which is being used. Um, it's really fascinating to see how the massive data, massive special data can talk a lot about what this entire uh, field can bring in and what kind of revolution it can bring in in various sectors. So um, for India, there's a shortage in skilled human resource in remote sensing and geospatial technology. So this could be one of the good career options. And then there has been a massive transformation in its use in agriculture, forestry, infrastructure, disaster management and irrigation defense as well as traffic management. Now under the digital India vision, areas has a specific focus on leveraging the geospatial information system for decision support system and development. When we talk about the digital India, government is also looking into how entire data sets can be transformed into a location-based information system and it can in turn talk a lot about historical changes which have happened, how the cities have progressed. The Smart Cities and Amrut program both have prospective centralized information system based on GIS platform that would integrate every aspect from conceptualization, planning and development to maintenance of these data sets. Now we've also had this national afforestation program, which has a clear mandate of use of remote sensing and GIS for planning sus subsequent project monitoring. So it's uh, very encouraging to see how these new policies and the projects which are being floated by the government emphasize on use of the latest technologies like the National Mission for Clean Ganga deals with extensive spatial data analysis for the Ganga Basin. Uh, geospatial technology also provides a holistic approach to interlinking of rivers based on existing geoinformatic tools and techniques. Um, it is possible to see what is the watershed, how are the streams moving using various satellite images. North Northeastern Region Urban Development Program talks about extensive use of GIS for planning and management of water supply, sewage and sanitation, as well as solid waste management. And Delhi Mom Bombay Industrial Corridor Project is implementing remote sensing and GIS and ITES for perspective planning and nodal planning of the corridors. So um, these are like just few of the projects. There are many more. I have just incorporated few of them in my slides. Now, uh, talking about the public and the government organizations which work and specifically, I've just put in more of the research organizations which deal with uh, projects which are more inclined towards geospatial solutions. So, First and the topmost would be our Indian Space Research Organization, which not only works on how satellite sensors are created, how these satellites are sent in the space, but it also works on a lot of applications and areas in which these satellite images can contribute and give results to enhance 
the working of the system. Uh, then we have NRSC and DRDO. These are again two government organizations with this intensive uh, research in geospatial field. National Spatial Data Infrastructure of Department of Science and Technology talks about how this entire data sets of GIS can be put together in a single platform, which can be shared with various organizations on need based. Then we have Indian Institute of Remote Sensing, which not only works on research projects and um, has a lot of innovation, but it also does a lot of capacity building uh, courses to enhance the skills of government officials, early career researchers and students who have a vision of moving ahead in this field. Then we have Geological Survey of India, Survey of India, which create maps and which are the authorized agencies to create data sets for India. Forest Survey of India also uses the geospatial technology. Ministry of Defense and Ministry of Environment has been extensively using GIS satellite images to uh, look at how their functioning is happening, what are the changes taking place. These uh, sectors also use the geospatial technology for national security purposes. And then <clears throat> the other agencies I've just listed down, and we've spoken about them at the stretch in the previous slides. I think, yeah, this is my last slide, and thank you very much. I would like to take up questions if any. Thank you, Dr. Sally. It was very interesting to see the growth of the uh, geospatial market in India. So I yeah. hope everyone enjoyed the presentation and yeah, we are open for questions. So if you have any questions, please use the chat box or just unmute yourself and ask directly. Yeah. I have not included much of the industry perspective right now because we were talking about research more. But uh, there has been a tremendous growth in the industry. And I'm not just saying it, I'm saying it with my experience where uh, I'm still getting, you know, a lot of calls from the industry for placements, but my entire batch is placed. You know, mm -hmm. that's a very good sign saying that, okay, we have much more space in the industry for the field. Yeah, so that's very interesting for young professionals, for yes. sure. So I'm going to ask you a question. So waiting for the others to come up with some questions. Um, mm -hmm. What do you think is the most uh, popular topic that you would recommend young professionals to work in? So if they want to start specializing in this field, so what is the mm -hmm. most popular topic? Um, I think if you want to really uh, look at the sector and enhance your skills you should look at big data analytics using geospatial technology that is the future now okay okay so we have one question so can you please comment on joint proposal with private university and government agencies um there has been a lot of uh, I think there has been work going around this joint proposals and consortiums of industries and private and government agencies has been working together in the past. Majorly these proposals are uh, sent out to funding agencies not within India, say if you're writing something together with NIUA and your university, you would be asking for funds from a foreign agency to work on a project. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Does, yeah. Is that exactly what you wanted to ask, Mr. Murthy? Uh, uh, hi, I'm Murthy speaking. Am I audible? Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, about foreign agencies, can you please elaborate? Because I was thinking about so far ISRO or NRSA kind of stuff only. Yes. Uh, this is something yeah, new. Yeah. Can you elaborate more? Sure. Um. So, uh, see, there are a couple of foreign agencies like British Council. Then we have um, 
Swiss Embassy. These people do fund a lot of projects which are innovative in nature. They do research, uh, fund research projects. Now, in these cases, they will be happy to uh, fund projects which are jointly proposed by government and the private sector or universities. But if you're talking about DST or ISRO, they would not want to fund a project which is with government and a university, right? So you will have to go beyond the boundaries. Ah, uh, okay, okay, got it, got it. This is where I always, I mean, <laughs> all the projects which we solutions which we try to provide, mm -hmm. already government is already doing it. So I was wondering, where do we have these opportunities uh, to yes. apply for funding? Okay, okay. Thank Good. you, thank you very much. That was very helpful. Yeah, most welcome. So we have uh, another question from Hasmukh. He's currently working in environmental remote sensing and he's asking what are the areas of interest in India? Uh, okay, so environmental remote sensing has a lot of connection to do directly with climate change. And currently India is working on a lot of projects in terms of if you see open heat island, change in the temperature, what's happening with the water level rising in the cities, why is the rain pattern changing? So if you are from environment, uh, you would be interested in, you know, deep diving into the climate change. And it's not only in India, but across the globe, you'll have very good um, future. And which is the more preferable sector? Um, see, private or government is something which I'll leave it up to you. Private comes with its own perks. Government will give you leverage to experiment various uh, technologies. But if you are working with a private sector, it will come with um, more of, you know, kind of projects they have and they'll want you to be a part of the team. Uh, in government, you could be a part of the team. You could also be at a position where you would be rolling out projects. So, yeah. So another question from Sodaf. So what are the pro prospects in ecosystem services and natural accounting in India? Um, what do you mean by ecosystem services? Are you talking about the flora and fauna or is it something else? Yeah, hello. Yeah, hello. Yeah, sorry. Uh, you know, the ecosystem services of uh, accounting for the various natural resources, uh, yes. like nation and all those what? kind of, yeah. So in uh, yeah. I'm course with the Green Skill Development Program in Envis. Mm -hmm. uh, so they told us about uh, means we learned about ecosystem services, but there have not been such kind of uh, means job opportunities out here and here. So could you please yes. elaborate? Yeah. Sure. So um, for that, I think a uh, lot of opportunities could be around WWF, or you could get funding from. Um, Ministry of Environment Science, where they are working on projects on afforestation and um, looking at what are the changing scenarios in terms of how the forest area is changing, what are the factors affecting it. But um, in private sector, a lot of job opportunities is coming in agriculture and insurance sector, where uh, People are looking at how the crop pattern should be monitored and enhanced using remote sensing data. Otherwise, yes, we have still not reached there in the Indian context and we do not have much of job opportunities in this. Yes. Okay, so we have another question from Sumia Deep. So, um, is a student from the Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore, and planning to pursue a master's program at faculty in Netherlands, but um, wished to pursue a doctoral degree in India and asking what are the available positions for research, doctor, PhDs, or anything related to geoscience at uh, ISRO, DRDO, or any other central governmental agencies. 
Um, okay, so if you're talking about like just reiterating, if I've got it right, you're saying that you're doing your master's from ITC Netherlands, you want to do your PhD from India, right? Yes, she okay. said. <laughs> Okay, so um, yes, there are very good opportunities to do PhD from India. Um, IITs have PhD, SEPT is going to restart its geomatics PhD program. But nevertheless, you can always do a PhD in urban planning or uh, technology and have GIS as your uh, subject domain. Um, there are opportunities and after PhD, it's like you can actually... Um, Apply for internships abroad if you have recommendations. Okay, one second. There are two questions. Sorry. Yeah, so I'll just start the first answer the first one. Um, again, in India, ISRO also has joint PhD programs and collaboration with various universities. You just need to know from which university you can register and you can do your projects under ISRO itself. So there's a lot of scope in India itself in this domain, and it's again increasing. Okay, I hope that answers that question. Yeah. So uh, another question from Raul: uh, What are the credentials uh, that are seeked by industries like masters or doctor for employment? Okay, so I'll just say very interestingly, if you are a master's in GIS, there are a lot of nowadays job openings in government also, which requires primary education or the minimum criteria, eligibility criteria is uh, master's in geospatial or GIS. Secondly, in the industry, if you have good knowledge of GIS and a understanding of programming, you would get fantastic packages. Apart from that, remote sensing and GIS is also, uh, remote sensing and programming is also a very good combination, which is highly, which is high in demand right now. Uh, at this point, these are the two things moving forward, cloud computing and GIS would be the future demand, what I can see. Uh, okay, and the next question is, apart from PhD, can we apply for internships abroad? Do you have... Okay, yes, you can definitely apply for internships abroad. Um, for recommendation, ITC Netherlands is one of the best, but um, there are good universities in Germany, and also there are a few very good universities in UK, which uses extensively geospatial technology. In fact, in India, we have GIS as a separate domain, uh, but in foreign, most of the universities and students start learning geospatial technology very much from the school. So I really would not uh, put it as there are only few universities where you can apply, but abroad you will find almost all the universities would have the domain of GIS. So I want to comment on that. So in GRSS, we have uh, every month a newsletter with a lot of opportunity for young professionals, internship or research opportunity worldwide. So please check them. Yeah. And uh, another question by uh, Pavana. Um, about uh, the geospatial sector and planetary exploration. So what are your comments on that? Uh, okay, this is one sector where I don't really work much. Um, but I would say that, of course, when uh, we are talking about climate change and world is not going to be really great to live in, there has been a lot of research being done by ISRO, uh, looking at various planets and how the life could be over there. But again, I'll say it's not my area of expertise. Okay. Yeah, it's it's a very interesting topic. Yeah, but yes. there are a lot of there, there are a lot of sectors, so it's difficult to have an overview about everything. Yeah. Yes. So maybe one question uh, from my side. 
uh, if you are hiring a research scientist or a PhD student or a postdoc, so what are the most important criteria that you are always looking for in candidates? Um, we generally try and see someone who is innovative, open to understand the technology and adapt the change in the technology because there's a lot which keeps on evolving in the geospatial sector. And uh, we would always encourage to have, um, you know, people who have basic understanding of GIS, remote sensing, know about sensors, special resolution, scale. And it's always an added advantage uh, to have candidates who understand programming and know how to code. Great. Mm -hmm. Okay, so does anyone have another question? So if it's not the case, then I would like to thank Dr. Shaili a lot for her time. And it was a very great session. And I want to thank everyone who joined us today. And yeah, we can conclude the webinar and we see you in no. our next YP webinar. Oh, someone? No. Yeah, I just have yes, one sir. question. Uh, yeah, actually I'm presently doing a PhD uh, in the forestry mm -hmm. department. So uh, I've just done a course on uh, means uh, GSD PMH ecosystem services. Apart from that, I have not means uh, I've done my bachelor's in forestry. So if I'm mm -hmm. looking after my uh, PhD, uh, if I'm looking for job opportunities in the GIS, so how do I prepare myself? Uh, like any courses, specific courses? Sure. So I will say you could you know learn a few of the basics, so you can enroll into online courses offered by IIRS, uh, which can help you enhance your geospatial knowledge. And uh, forestry is a very good domain, which has a lot of scope. So if you have the added domain knowledge of GIS, it will help you get better job opportunities. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah. Yes. Okay, so Dr. Shali, do you want to add anything as a closure? <laughs> no, I think I've covered everything. Thank you everyone for your time. Yeah, thank and you so much. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you very much. That was really very interesting. And thanks everyone for joining us and see you in the next webinar. Have a good day. Thank you, bye.